It's Wayne. We're back again. I'm going to show you a different tie-down method. Typically this tie-down method is used with uh, chains and uh, cluster straps to hook up maybe a pickup or a van or something along, along that way. You can use this same method on cars as well, um, but I like to use it on pickups and vans. So we're going to back up here. Watch the gloves here. We're going to back up. Get on the gloves. Step that off. That on. Oh. Might kick in. I don't think the I don't think the PTO kicked in. Yeah, it did. Okay, PTO did kick in. I like this better. It's not kicking up. Okay, so let's get this bed rolled back. My gloves. <clears throat> Whole new day, forgot everything I was doing. Again, this is a pickup truck, so the hook points should be just behind the front wheels, whereas on that Mustang, they were right basically in front of them. But I think this pickup, they're going to be a Gonna stage our chain so we can easily get it. Gonna roll the bed back here. Get back in here and toss the chains back. Let's see what there's the hook to on this one. This one's got a hole in the frame up there that's looks like a regular tie down hole. Be able to grab that. Okay. Oops, oops. Stepping on the cord there. Go around, we'll toss our chain back. And again, when you're hooking on these, you want something solid. Usually these hook points in the frame are really nice. There's also ones on the control arm that could be used. You could come back farther on the frame and use these ones back farther. Back in there, some of the vans on Ford, you got to go back a little further. All right, let's get our wire rope tightened up. Okay. A little bit of tension on it there so we can get the truck in neutral. <clears throat> Key back off, kind of accessory position where it'll still be in neutral and roll up. Again, what I'm watching for is to make certain that it's kind of coming up real nice and even on both sides because it's a heavy vehicle. And it is, it looks pretty even on both sides. This 
is going to be a pretty good load for this F550. This is an F, uh, F250 with batteries in it. Well, get into our, get the ratchet straps out of the way. I don't want to get into them. I'm going to adjust it a little bit to the right. Just a little bit. Okay, the first thing we're going to do with this big, a heavy vehicle on it, that's the reason I like showing this, we're going to go ahead and throw a safety chain on it and get our straps out. J chain and our cluster strap. Well, this is, I call it a safety chain, but it's just the first one up there. I just don't want it. I want to get something other than the winch on it so that if it one decides to take off rolling, I've got a safety on it. Maybe for heavier loads? Yeah. And on this one, we're going to go right here in the axle tube right below the ball joint. A lot of times you can go around the axle, but this is an F-250 with a very broad axle, so your, your J-chain, the J-hook, won't go around it. Bring your straps up here. Okay. Just going ahead and putting this in there. It doesn't have to be tight right now. I'm just going to get that kind of taut. Lay our cluster down here to the back. We're going to go around the other side here and get this second J chain on it. strap off. Take your front over the wheel strap off so we can use this T-slot. And here we're gonna we'll adjust these more in just a minute. Just lay it up in there. Now we're gonna lay off the slack of this a little bit. And that doesn't happen very often. These chains usually you got to take in a link or out a link. This chain here is just a little bit loose, but it's not enough. If I take it in one link, I'll show you. Take it in. I take it in one link. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it is a little better. Seems like they're both pretty tight right now. What you're trying to do is get these front two chains tight so that you have equal pressure on both sides. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to tilt the bed down a little bit because it's a heavy load so we don't grind on the bed bottom back here too bad. Why am I? The PTO is not kicking up on this truck for some reason. We'll have to look at that later on today. As I'm going back, I'm actually already looking for hook points. 
Usually it's in front of the spring is usually their slots. Sometimes it's in between. Um, get it all the way up here to... And again, on a heavier vehicle, I want to make certain that I'm really paying attention to my tilt point. I don't want to, I want to make certain I leave that on the ground. Because again, it's a heavy vehicle. It really don't want to put any load on the spring. So you want to roll it all the way forward before you even start tilting it or even get ready to. So for me, I wouldn't even start, I wouldn't even tilt it down until I got these on there so that I know that I've got nice tight tension on the front chains and I can put these on back here in the back. And again on this one, a lot of the trucks and stuff, there's these T-slots that are in the frame. And again, I always do an X pattern on the back. Simply stating, it just pulls it from one side to another side. And on these, you want to leave your strap just a little bit tight. I know on the uh, when I was doing over the wheels, I would leave the straps, I'd pull them taut. But on these, I'll leave just a little bit of slack. The reason being is because this is not going to come around. You remember, you want to get at least try to get uh, into the second wrap so that it stays it stays taut. Now, we'll get this one here on here. And well, that means we've got it safe and secure. So now I'm going to go ahead and tilt it down so I can more easily put the next one on. But I don't want to, I usually do not like, I like putting one on the back before I tilt it down and get it secure so it doesn't roll forward on me. So now we'll put the second one in here. Of course, this side is going to be a little bit different. Four tanks on this side. They have to go. It's going to be in front of the fuel tank. We have to go up even in front of the fuel tank even farther on this one. To get it back to where you're at. So. There isn't, I won't say an exact science to all of this. To me, that's what I love, love so much about towing, is that you have to use a lot of really good common sense. And because of all this fuel tank stuff in here and it's got a protective cover on it, we've got to get in front of that so we can get back to the back. To pull backwards on the truck. And again, same type of procedures before. I'm not going to get that overly tight. I'm going to leave a little bit out of it so that I can make certain that I get at least a couple wraps on my ratchet here. This ratchet it needs lubrication pretty bad. This one here has been sitting in a box. Again, you don't use this method very often, or at least we don't. We typically use the over-the-wheel strap more than we use this. So this here needs to be lubricate it a little bit and make it work a lot better and again we could make this a perfect video and make certain we do some of this stuff but I want to give you real what I consider real world experience because that's what you're going to experience out there on the road and if I do it to where it's just perfect and everything's neat and clean and I've looked at every vehicle and made certain there's nice pretty hook points and it's going to come out perfect that's not going to be what you're going to experience out there. And again, I like to get those pretty tight so that we've got this vehicle safe and secure. Now, if it was even a heavier vehicle than this, I have at different times taken and run another safety chain around the differential just to safety. I might not even put anything on it to make it tight just in case because this truck is probably weighs close to 6,000 pounds with the weight that's in it right now. And a lot of your work trucks and stuff will hit that weight. And these ratchet straps are rated about 30, probably in the 3,000 pound range. So you're within the working load limit. But if it was much heavier than this, I would go to even a, another securement method on it, just in case if something failed, because your hard stops are gonna be when you stop, not take off. Um, so I would, I might throw an extra J-chain back here 
or something along those lines if it were a heavier vehicle than what I've already got because you're getting pretty close to the working load limit of what you've got so we've got this truck on here again this is a second method another method of doing it uh, a third method of teaching you how to tie down a vehicle you can do this J chain and and ratchet straps or cluster straps on the back of any vehicle before I found the over the wheel straps that's all I had because that's what came on the truck when it was new um, so I used to do this hookup on every car that I towed um, and we would go if it was a front wheel drive we take the J hook and go over top of the control arm and let it the J fall down that way it didn't get into the CV boot and you weren't buying CV boots pulling it up and back on the car so um, this method can be used in anything we typically reserve it now for the heavier vehicles we think it's a little stronger setup than the over the wheel and again you could use over the wheel on a 17 inch tire or bigger but to me uh, I just get a little nervous about it and especially like on this truck it's almost too big for the truck it's right there on the tail end of it so again I don't think that would work on an over the wheel if you had 21 foot bed it, it might work a little better and we've got three or four of those but even on those trucks I would prefer that they use this method than over the wheel I just think that the force of the tire turning and rolling back and forth would make it pop out so I feel more secure on these heavier vehicles of using this uh, method of tie down so we're going to go deliver this one and then we'll offload it for you and show you how that's done. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>